Um, thank you very much. Uh, actually, uh, we have a lot of talks talking about uh, how to be a good social engineer, uh, what kind of knowledge you should gain to be able uh, to do a successful uh, assessment. But today, we're talking about mistakes. These mistakes, we may uh, do these mistakes that make you feel in the social engineer assessment. So, she already introduced me. Uh, I'm a penetration testing specialist. Uh, actually, I mainly focus in social engineering and physical assessment. Yes, in, in, in the morning, in every day, I do pen testing application networks. But actually, I decided to uh, make it uh, focus and uh, uh, fix it from the root because the root of insecurity is human. It's no matter what uh, antivirus or firewalls you implement it, in the end, uh, I wanted to be received a single email can destroy all your security implementations. So we know that our nervous system, that's what we get back from thousands of years ago, our nervous system was designed only to <coughs> attack or attacking from animals only. So uh, that's, that's from thousands years ago. But now uh, we get nervous all the time because we feel threats around us all the time. And that's I want to mention that uh, as a humans we cannot say that uh, the fear I can control it. I cannot uh, control the fear. I cannot control uh, curiosity. But I can protect these behaviors. So today uh, this talk will be about uh, social engineering uh, mistakes uh, from uh, many phases like reconnaissance, uh, preparations, and exploitation, uh, breaking in mis uh, mistakes. Uh, reporting mistakes and uh, we have the story time and also we have uh, the mitigations. We, we always doing uh, awareness or mitigations but in the end the same company that doing mitigation is being attacked and we will find what the mitigation gaps here. So I want to first give this disclaimer. Uh, I'm not a philosopher or psychologist. I just do a lot of research. And uh, this talk is based on my personal experience in science. And for the last legal disclaimer, this presentation is information and educational purpose only. So social engineering actually is psychological manipulation uh, of people behavior in order to gain information, right? So uh, as I said before, the social engineering being used from the existing of humans. If we focus on our little kids, they doing the social engineer action. If this kid doing it her homework, and you of course trust her because it's your relative, and she's asking, asking for a chocolate or a candy, and somehow she's influencing you, she's doing social engineer. Uh, but now the terms of social engineer itself is combined with technology, and it has tactics and techniques. And uh, of course, the human mind has has gaps by default, and I'm talking about all human beings, including the social engineers themselves. It just be harder to target someone working in the security field. Uh, it's not about uh, stupidity; actually, it's about ignorance or uh, the lack of awareness. That uh, the correct word that you don't know what is fishing, what is fishing, uh, so you will be easily someone targets you. So when you start doing the social engineering project, this client telling you, I want to test my employees for social engineer. So you start your reconnaissance. You simply recall for employees, internet activities, false experience, and previous companies. And you don't reconnaissance for the company itself, the news location, the market, the customers. And the last thing, the social media, uh, which is activity, families, friends, and places they visit. Because social media are leaking a lot of information. Uh, for example, employees in social media, if the company is doing a certain event, okay, we are celebrating tomorrow uh, with this event. So this is a key information I can use to target this company. Okay, I'm going to send you a phishing mail saying, please register in that event. And you simply click because you're leaking the information that uh, there's an event tomorrow. So here's what mistakes we may do that make us feel fail, sorry, in, in social engineering. And in the end, uh, when you fail in social engineering, you report a wrong result to the client. You say to the client, you are pretty secure. You are, have a good awareness, and that's wrong. That's, you fail because you're doing these mistakes. 
So first of all, before we deal with the state, uh, uh, the reconnaissance, we should identify the organization type. I'm targeting a retail, should I target this a bank, this is an oil and gas company, because and, and it depends on the organization type itself with your reconnaissance. For example, if I'm targeting an oil and gas company, this building uh, like have 10 floors, so I'm, okay, I'm searching for, for some sort of information, let me use, uh, for example, a pretexting, uh, till gating. But if I'm going to target their retail, uh, this is totally different. I'm searching for information to make me initialized to target their system or using their system because it's retail. It's in the end, it's open for anyone to be inside. Uh, we have this question that we should create scenarios for us or do reconnaissance first. And that's also based on the organization type. For example, the retail, I'm creating the scenario first. Okay, the scenario is I want to be authorized. I'm searching for information. I need to prepare a paper that makes me authorized. So I'm searching for a person to put his name in that paper to let me end. So this is a scenario before the reconnaissance. In other situations, I'm doing reconnaissance first. Then based on the reconnaissance, what I collect is doing the scenario. Then while we're doing reconnaissance, we should have the company uh, structure, policy. How many, how many departments that are there? How many phys physical security layers they have? That make me putting a lot of scenarios. So for example, if I'm targeting a company, they have like three security layers. The first layer is a security guard. Uh, this reception asking for ID verification uh, to who you are going to meet. The second security layer, which you, after going to the floor, there is another receptionist asking also where uh, to who you are going to meet. So I should know this because if I'm able to bypass the phys first physical security layer, I will be able maybe to bypass the second one, which will make me feel in the whole scenario. Uh, sometimes society affects the social engineering. And somehow, the country, uh, if we have like an oil and gas company, this oil and gas company, let's assume that it has, it's existing in the uh, United Arab Emirates, in USA, in Egypt, every country has this effect. For the country I work that United Arab Emirates is a very safe country. It's very safe, the police make it very safe. And these people have the knowledge of, okay, no one has the courage to do that. No one has the courage to uh, get inside the organization itself. That's an aspect in many ways. Uh, if we target the same organization or same oil and gas company in Egypt, in Egypt have the culture that the, they need paper. If you want to access any entity, especially the government, you need this paper and stamps. So you should include in your scenario to have that paper. This is part of the society, part of the country itself culture. Uh, stop your ego. Some social engineers have the ego that, okay, I'm, I'm a social engineer, I'm a pen tester, I'll be able to break in this organization, these people don't have enough awareness, so I'm going to uh, tell them whatever story I will tell, and I'll be in. And simply, you've been, you've been caught because of your ego. So please stop your ego. Continue using OSNIT. Don't say I have, okay, collect some sort of information, and I created one, two, three scenarios, and that's it. Because maybe these two or three scenarios are not convincing enough. Maybe if you continue using OSPI or collecting information, you, you will create more convincing scenarios. This is the preparation part. So this is part of the movie. It's, I don't know if you guys watch that movie slept. Uh, this is mean the study of the character. The more you know about the more you'll be able to believe it, okay? So I'm gonna play this scene of the movie for more than two years. To whom am I speaking with now? Dr. Fletcher, it's Barry. It doesn't seem like Barry. Barry is an extroverted leader. Yes, I am. I'm gonna take a professional guess based on the description of all 23 identities that live in Kevin's body that I've gotten from Barry. I think I'm talking to Dennis. 
I'm encouraged we can finally meet. And I've guessed this because you've adjusted the chocolate dish twice since you came in here, and I understand you have OCD. <laughs> oh, I see. Now I see. That's clever. That's clever. But I'm, I'm, I'm not Dennis. And you and Patricia have been banned from the light for quite a while now, primarily, shall we say, because of your beliefs. Patricia and Dennis are very unstable. I'm not Dennis. Have you both taken charge now? Please believe me. I'm Barry. My name's Hedwig. I have red socks. He's on the move. What? <laughs> He's on the move. Who? <laughs> Someone's coming for you, and you're not gonna like it. You guys make noises in your sleep. Tell us. I'm not supposed to say. <laughs> but he's done awful things to people, and he'll do awful things to you. You can listen to people talking, and they don't even know you're listening. What does this talk to? Don't touch that. I just want to see if it works. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Don't touch those buttons. You're going to get us found yeah, out. Yeah, you gonna... skated. Hey, what up? What up? Hello? Slap you! What is this? <laughs> Hello, hello, my name is Casey Cook. I'm being held in a basement. I've been abducted with two other girls. Who the hell is this? Yeah. Is she in that room? We're here! Help us! We're in here! What is this? How many are there? No, 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 no. Don't go in there. Don't go in there. Don't worry. I'll talk to him. He listens to me. <sighs> He's not well. He knows what you're here for. He's not allowed to touch you. He knows that. Mm -mm. Okay, so as we see in the movie, uh, this is uh, as far as the light the side of bias movies, but in this movie he he his physically and the, the way he's speaking change as per his character. He acting like a child, he speaks as a child, and that's what you should do when you be doing pre-testing. You pretend to be a sales guy, so you should act like a sales guy, speak like a sales guy, and act again as a sales guy should to to be believed of, of what you're doing. For example, if I'm pre pretending to be a sales guy or a technician, uh, I can just you know have this a lot of tattoos and you know the style of my hair is very strange. This is not like, 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 look like a sales guy. You are not me, something strange here. So, this is, this is one of, I think, many of us have received that fake profile link again. And this is uh, just a fake one. This is a picture. When I upload this image on Google, I found she is a famous actress. And definitely, she is, she is not uh, a fake. I, I, I realize this is fake. And, I realize not because I'm social media, I believe that a normal user will realize this is a fake profile. So when you're doing a preparation, like you prepare a fake profile on Facebook or LinkedIn on Twitter or social media networks, first of all, uh, before you're creating a legitimate profile, you must study the character. If you are creating a profile of a woman, 
act like a woman, speak like women. Don't, don't, you know, uh, speak like guys, I'm saying I'm, I'm a woman, okay? Uh, read about the new job. Uh, you are saying that you are working in, in, in any field, in HR, in marketing. So you, you should know the hierarchy of that job. Because people, it may be that you have this chat with someone have that uh, experience in that field you are pretending that you are working in. And when you, uh, this in every field have the common words, you know, the special words that are using between the HR people, special words in, in our field. So we should read about the hierarchy, about the famous words that are being used in that. Of course, avoid random accept and uh, bad friends in Facebook and other social media to not being close. You are speaking to someone and suddenly the profile not exist. Uh, watch every detail and just have she's a friend. You know, in, in the morning you're a woman, in, in the night you're a man, uh, in the evening or after midnight you're a little kid. So just have this she's a friend. This is, this is one I have created. This is a LinkedIn profile, okay? Actually, my name was Lisa, and Lisa was able to target a lot of companies from the last two years. She's very famous. And as we can see here, uh, she's from Lebanon, and she's working, uh, she's a graduate from American University of Beirut. Secondly, she, have, she worked as an HR assistant, in one of the companies, also in Beirut. Then the human resource administrator, also in Beirut. And then she worked as a human resource recruiter in one of the companies in Dubai. And I chose human resource because in part of my lifetime, I was planning to take an HR diploma, and I have read about HR field. So if I have a chat with someone talking to me with HR field, I'll be able to talk with them. And same profile here in, in Facebook. We have the same details. If someone searched me in Facebook, and by the way, you'll find this, pro I close this profile right now, but this profile was active for more than two years. It's very legitimate, you cannot catch it, and actually the picture itself, I searched for like three weeks to get that picture from the internet because I want to get, have several pictures, not one. So in, by time and time I upload another picture, so yeah, with my friends, that, this is one of also mistakes we may fail, that we can't lie. We are social engineers. The first thing is we are lying. So if you don't lie, learn how to lie. Keep it short and to the point. If you are going to the company and you lie that you are here to check something, don't uh, talk too much, don't tell many details, because in the end this guy why, why should I know all these details? Tell me that you want to check something. That's it. Uh, keep it reasonable. Before you tell someone about the lie, imagine yourself that you're receiving that lie. If it's convincing for, me, for you, then it will be convincing for the others. Try to find gaps in the story I'm telling for, you, for yourself. Of course, keep calm. <laughs> Don't be nervous. Don't say, uh, okay, I, I just want, want, want to, to, to this is strange, right? Don't wait, for, don't wait for interrogation because of the details. Know all the details about the story. Don't wait to catch up to tell these details. Know your target. Know how far he know. If you're uh, pretending to be a technician, don't, you know, as, as, as soon as, as possible, sorry, don't talk to a technical guy and if you, want to talk to a technical guy, how far his knowledge? You should know that before you are talking to him. Of course, watch your body language. You watch the body language is telling a lot about your story. The people rely on the body language. If he like he has the hand moving a lot, this is also strange, right? Finally, practice. Practice to lie. You know, pick up the taxi and tell the driver, tell the driver yeah, I'm from here, we see. My name is Tony. And another driver, yeah, I'm from Lebanon. My name is Mark. You know, practice to lie. And if the driver say, okay, your accent is not like um, someone from you say, yeah, my father is from, uh, from Japan, for example. Try to practice to lie. And of course, don't lie to your relatives and work. This is bad. 
This is uh, one of the mistakes in the fishing. So fishing actually, we are pretending for, uh, to be someone and trying to leak information over the phone. So always watch the tone changes. You ask the first question, right? And then you ask the second question, watch the tone. If the tone change, that's mean he's skeptical about your question. Don't, don't push it to ask the third one or the fourth one. Try to ask another question, a generic one, then if his tone, tone didn't change or he trusting you, then you can ask for your information. So always watch the tone changes. Never end the conversation after getting the key information. Don't just talk, 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 and you end up the call without getting the key information. A little child before you say goodbye, because people always remember the last thing. If I'm talking to you now, I'm talking to someone over the phone, I ask my key information in the middle of the conversation. And I have, after that, if I, after I get the, convert, the, the information, I have this little chat. Because if you remember, after I close the call, you're going to remember the last three or four questions, the little chat. Then the most of, most of the, the conversation itself is forgettable. Don't call a number that already exposed to the public. Uh, that's in case that you are calling someone from inside the organization, right? So don't call Masala, uh, sorry, that's my Arabic uh, uh, bank. Don't call someone from inside the organization from a public, from like this, the company have a contact uh, number or a customer service number. Because if you call someone from inside, that's make him that, okay, you are someone from inside the company, because this is a public, uh, contact number, anyone can call that number. So always if you are pretending or if you want to call someone from inside, try to call from an unknown number or inside number so he will assume that you are working as a company or in another department. So this is, I will say a little bit psychology. Uh, we know that human behaviors, we target the have trust, false assumptions, curiosity, fear, and ignorance, empathy. And uh, if you want to know about this more, you can see my previous uh, talk, last diff camp. But we know, we know social engineers target what? Then the question we target who? I'm targeting fear against who? Against managers, against office boys, against who I'm targeting fear. So don't use fear towards high positions, manager and CEO, you will, you will not go to the manager, hey, I'm going to put you in in the report if he didn't let you in. To who? He's the highest position. Actually, he's going to put you in in the report, not him. So this is, uh, as per psychology, women are more vulnerable to healthiness more than men. And this is a good way, by the way, because uh, women are more emotional. And this is in the, in the work environment, I would say. Yes, the, you find, you hear many accidents. Uh, that uh, I would say that uh, the survivor of the guy, the hero is a man because man maybe he take risks, risk his life. Sometimes it's a very stupid decision, you know. But in, in, in the work environment, the women are able to help more than men. Uh, also, as per psychology, women are more sympathy than men. So this will be useful in, in case you have been caught. So you're using this sympathy to, to escape. You know, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I think I've been lost. You know, uh, I think uh, this is this is uh, will report my manager. Or even you can use it when you trying to target uh, a company. You you when speaking to a woman, saying, okay, uh, I think my, my manager or my boss will will uh, will fire me or will uh, I would say doing harm to me or maybe deduct from my salary. I have no time to get that paper that. Uh, confirming that I'm a surprise person, please let me in. That's work. Uh, also, the, the confirming that men and women give the opposite gender a higher trust, rather red trust rating than the same gender. So, uh, this is from a paper, Institute of Psychology, uh, 2016, Chinese Academy of Science. I recommend that uh, if someone interested in and this, this trusting gender, read the about this paper, it would be very useful. Uh, so we trust the opposite gender. 
because sometimes we as a man we can and somehow know how this man uh, maybe can trust him, you know. So we trust the other man the more the same one. Don't put borders around helpfulness. Yes, social media target helpfulness, but in the end, give hope. Uh, giving hope is uh, is very powerful. Uh, don't wait just uh, for someone who needs help to help him. No, give hope. Because in real life situations, you need help, but you don't know me much. So you will not ask for help. But if I give you a hope that I will give you another job, better life, uh, better money for your family, that's make me, make you, sorry, leak some information, maybe I can use it later. Uh, this is also the break-in mistakes when you're trying to reach or break in your organization. Be careful of what you are wearing. Uh, hide all the tattoos. Uh, don't uh, leak the, your identity because sometimes maybe social engineers or pentesters, they have this tattoo or they have to with the laptop hacked or logos of DEFCON or any conferences, you know, social engineer codes. So be careful because, okay, this is not look like uh, someone is sales, marketer, whatever. Of course, you know all signs that can identify you from your body, from your laptop, hide it. Uh, before you know about people, know yourself. That's what I was talking about, that you converse yourself about the life and uh, before you tell the story to the people. Uh, of course, practice in your pretext, tell the story again and again, try to find the gaps. Uh, here is, is a color of very powerful, it has a subconscious impact, okay? So, if, for example, if, if you are wearing this blue, it means they have the trust, the efficiency, the communication. Some people say, okay, he's, a, he's wearing a blue shirt. I think he's, he's a good guy. He, he cannot do, do anything hard. So, colors are very powerful. So, after you break in, after you being inside the organization itself, uh, observation is not only the clothes or the uniform type, the, the smell, the teeth, hands. Also, we now observe about the security layers, how many layers they have. And this is happening in the site visit before we are doing or after, sometimes. Uh, also remember, attacking the old woman, not the same as you attack a young man. Because the way you take to all, talking to the old woman is not the same as talking to young men. It's totally different. Don't, don't make it like a fix it, a way of talk that will not be convinced. Of course, don't run away from the security guard after maybe you get caught. Don't run away. Running away is a very bad, bad mistake. He will call the police, and you have a long time meeting the police, then telling him that you are a surprise person. Don't run away. You are not doing something wrong. Actually, our surprise person is doing that assessment. So tell him, yeah, good, you, got it. you catch me. That's good. So this is when we do the reporting mistakes. Uh, first of all, put a clear scenario. Doing the steps, I was able to do that scenario. I reached that data through till gating. I was able to bypass this physical security by till gating, uh, by, uh, uh, for example, uh, from pretexting, be clear scenarios in the report. Attach more non-technical proof of concept, because you are talking to the management. And when you're talking to the management, you're saying, okay, tell gating, vision, this one, the management will reply, what the hell? Tell me about the business, what the risk. Of course, don't mention names and faces, because believe it or not, there's bad people, there's bad managers. I, I have seen a lot of many companies, they you know, no, it's not my fault, this was fault, this is my fault, you know, because he feels that he gets fired. So this is bad people. So don't put names or faces in the report. You just mentioned I was able to bypass the, this department through a person, and that's it. Don't say his name or mention his face. Rise business risk. Tell the management how they're gonna lose if you reach that area. Okay, I'm breaking the data center. I was able to reach the data center of the company. What the business risk? Don't tell them about technical. Okay, you're gonna lose that amount of money. Maybe that's when the compatible information will be leaked 
uh, outside, so your competitors will benefit from that information. Talk to him in a judgmental way. The technical way, leave it to the technical people. Don't mix it. So this is uh, a story time. <laughs> uh, actually, this is one of the uh, retail companies. This was from maybe a month ago. I was supposed to targeting a retail company, and this company uh, have a lot of branches inside the United Arab Emirates. And of course, this is what I'm talking about, that uh, uh, scenarios first or reconnaissance first. So here is the scenarios come first. So targeting will not be effective. It's simply an open place. Have, uh, store, store rooms are monitored by CCTV camera, a lot of employees, and stealing sensitive documents or equipment won't be effective. We have that sensors, also the CCTV, CCTV cameras, the security guards. So the only way to be an authorized person. So actually, uh, I have doing a lot of research on the internet to find this company is in, in United Arab Emirates is. Uh, selling a digital point of sale for retail, okay? So, as here you can see, I can, this is, you have the letter of the get out from jail letter, or the letter of engagement, I would say. So I turn this letter to letter of authorization, right? So here, I put just my name, this is not my signature, this is my uh, boss signature, actually, I'm maybe I get fired after this talk. <laughs> So I put my name here, and this is my email, right? So IT at the company name, and this is uh, supposed to be the other signature of the guy. But I put another name, another name here, and the reconnaissance that finds someone, he worked as a store manager. He worked for first of all 12 years in the company. So 12 years means that everyone knows about him, right? And actually he worked as a store manager. The store manager is dealing with the retailers, dealing with the stores, because retailers have you know, shortage of, of products, so they contact the store's manager, they become the area manager. So the perfect name that to put in that letter to get to have me the Australia. So here's the other result. It's a full control with the BOC system. Actually, they bring a coffee for me. It was good. And I was able to even plug my flash drive and do whatever I want. I just like spend one hour, you know, I get bored, I spend another 30 minutes doing anything because uh, I'm someone come to them saying that the view system, uh, we have received complaint that uh, you are uh, you, uh, suffering from loading time when you submit the vouchers or, or, or credit cards and almost the POC system has that issue. It, maybe you face it in when you buy something in, in market and supermarket right you will just maybe one time facing this lady telling you but you just wait a minute it's taking time it's cool right the idea is it was five branches I was able to target the five branches and no one stopped me no one actually stopped me and even in the third branch I use this camera to take pictures I don't use any hard hardy camera just Please, please, please guys, catch me. I'm, I'm taking pictures. This is a camera, this is not hiding one. And this is one of, they have the, the source code of, of the point of sale system. I just take a copy, and actually they have 30 table and 64 bit. It's perfect. But in the end, uh, to be honest, with this four branches, this, the last branch have catch me. I was very happy. You know, this, this guy, is, you know, why are you happy? I'm calling the police. Yes, man, I'm really happy. Man, why are you happy? So, he finally found out I'm a Salah person, and the first time I called uh, the guy, he uh, used his name, uh, he called me for the first time after like two weeks using his name. It, it, was, it was good. So, we're talking about the mitigations. We all the time hearing about Right, security awareness, uh, try to give training to their employees. So that's we have told. We that's we what they have told to you. Okay, that you have the basic security layers, new information is useless, uh, information value is different from one to another. Uh, social engineer, uh, he she don't need to be your friend. Don't click in malicious links, don't install malicious software. This is very generic. You, you don't implement any awareness by 
giving that uh, sentence. So this is one of the mistakes of the mitigation gaps, I would say. Users will not make any rational choices. Don't depend on that. Because assuming that your employees will be uh, rational of what they're going to click, it's not happening. It's not true. Punish and reward is not working anymore. Punishing someone that he is responsible for that your company is being attacked, uh, it's not working. Rewarding someone or telling him that it, you're, uh, you're gonna be rewarded if you do that practice, it's, gonna, it's, it's not working anymore. So forget about punish and reward. Of course, don't fire any employee because firing someone because he doing that mistake and you bring another employee, he will do the same mistake again because it's not his fault. That's your fault as you are responsible, for example, that security team. I know it's boring, but you need to review your standards and policy. This is, should be happening. Uh, this is one of the effective ways that you acknowledge the only is about the last incident. Of course, any company has uh, attacking attempts uh, through phishing, through especially the, the, the phishing one. So tell them, uh, even through email that that guy trying to target our company, this is a phishing mail, that's how you can identify the phishing mail. And identify them about the last incidents. Don't put more technical details, don't tell about who is targeting you, but tell them that we are under attack through that way, through the, that phishing mail. Sorry, it's become too hot. Okay. Uh, forget about reminders and emails. So actually, reminders and emails is not efficient. Uh, telling that uh, don't install malicious link, malicious software, it will not work. And the best thing is you go and do it for like the mitigation against social engineer is attacking yourself. Uh, you can identify you attacking yourself. Create that phishing mail and send it to all employees. At least you have that view of. Uh, the age, the gender, the department, job rules, who are the most one are vulnerable to that phishing game? Are there young adults? In which department you should focus to doing the security training or security awareness? We all to all the time we all, as I talk, we, all, we tell the people don't talk, don't click in that link. This is a phishing, this is uh, a malicious thing. So I can divide the, the phishing in three types. The request type that is uh, someone asking you to send money, uh, someone asks you to do some sort of action, transfer money to uh, offshore. This is an exploit one, which is uh, actually targeting your applications uh, through attachment, uh, ODAs. And this is credential. This is the most hardest one. There's someone telling you, please. Uh, change your pa old password, we are the security team from that company, asking for your credentials. So you should tell your employees what means by phishing me, what means by the malicious things, because people all the time think about malicious things in the way that, okay, if I found a short net link, okay, this is malicious email. And of course, criminals being smarter every day. So this is a method. Uh, to help you decide if someone lying. There is many effective ways to detect lies, but only if you practice these skills. No lie detection uh, match bullet, this is true. And there's many false positive and false negative. But there's the best way to detect lies is first psychology, and uh, here's a found by Daley Hardy, 2017, from Psychology Today. Just being asked a series of innocent questions. Questions that he will not lie about, about it. Where are you from? You know, this, this kind of questions and move his eye pattern, movement pattern. Then ask the question that he may be lying about. It. Then see his mind, eye movement pattern being changed or not. And this is, will be useful if you get that training to even security guard, receptionists that be dealing with people every day. <coughs> so this is uh, one of the companies I'm targeting. By phishing mail. This is come from the CISO. So this CISO send the email to all employees. As we can see, we need help with your password. This is awareness from his perspective. Yes, security awareness be aware of malware. That's it. 
Yes, this image is perfect. He's going to uh, tell about the fishing image. Right? Or you play on a fishing meal that he send it every week. But this is happening. We send a convincing fishing meal. The result, 88 employees have been playing that email and give our their password in just less than two days. That's proof that the reminders is not effective. This have full analytics, 88 access from desktop, mobile, Safari, Chrome. This is a talk with his CISO from Visa, of course. Visa talked to the CISO said that giving a protection from phishing me. And of course, this means departments has been, this all, almost all departments in the company have been changed the passwords. This is one of the higher position. This is a federal authority of network regulation which is very, very dangerous that he leaves something like that. This is, he keep the username and password in the email itself. So yeah, the paranoia is never entirely mistaken. I got it from Sigmund Freud, and I would say in the end, it's for you. Your job is not only breaking uh, in organization, it's not only hacking uh, networks. Please try to create much of the teachers for the moments who are vulnerable. Don't just break in and that's it, you finish. No, return back to the people who are vulnerable and tell them why they are vulnerable, how to mitigate it. Your job is to help for better security, not only breaking or hacking. Thank you.